Much love and respect. Pura vida, mi gente. Thanks for tuning in once again. Today, real quick, we're going to talk about the Mesha Steli or the Moabite Stone. A lot of people ask me about more science uh, information and history and teachings. So I wanted to remind everybody real quick before I begin. I do have a, a series I did a couple years back. It's this one right here. There's a whole playlist, uh, six parts. It's called No More Misunderstanding. This is the cover for part one. All right. As it says here, the Moorish Americans are descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Prophet Noble Drew Ali. He said that, huh? Who are the Moabites? Again, this is six parts of this series. If you haven't checked these videos out, make sure to check those out. Combining historical records and scripture. So again, we're going to be talking about the mesh steel today. I've mentioned it before. Again, I have a lot of new subscribers, so I'd like to go over some information. It says here that the mesh steel, also known as the Moabite stone, is a steel dated around 840 BC, containing a significant Canaanite inscription in the name of King Mesh of Moab, a kingdom located in modern Jordan. Mesha tells how Shemosh, the god of Moab, had been angry with his people and had allowed them to be subjugated to the kingdom of Israel. But at length, Shemosh returned and assisted Mesha to throw off the yoke of Israel and restore the lands of Moab. Mesha also describes his many building projects. It is written in a variant of the Phoenician alphabet. We're talking about a Paleo-Hebrew script. This is an actual archaeological artifact official it's in the Louvre museum collections it's been there it was discovered in the 1860s supposedly they can't pinpoint the origin because they could have found it here in america and brought it over there talking about they found it over there we still dig it on that but we know with a lot of those artifacts they're saying are from over there a lot of them actually were found here either way it's a historical artifact in the museum's collection there's many writings on it it has been publicly declared to be an official artifact with official Paleo-Hebrew writing, old original Hebrew. Uh, as it says in this book, Moab's Patriarchal Stone, being an account of the Moabite Stone, its story and teaching by the Reverend James King, authorized lecturer to the Palestine Exploration Fund. This is from 1878. So this kind of goes over the discovery of the stone, the artifact, the whole story behind it. Chapter 2 actually talks about the land of Moab. In order that our readers may better appreciate the invaluable inscription on the Moabite stone, we think it desirable to sketch briefly the more striking features in the history of the land of Moab. Moab was the elder son of Lot, and the name literally signifies seed of the father. Remember that Lot is Abraham's nephew. So again, Moab can mean seed of the father, or according to some philologists, the desirable land, a term fitly applied to the district from the great fertility of the soil, all right, Moab. So where was the real ancient Moab? Check out the video I did with Moses in America, Deuteronomy 34 in Utah. Is that what we're talking about when we're talking about Moab? Lot's younger son was called Ben-Ami, 
And while the Moabites were descendants of Moab, Moabites, who's the Moabites? Descendants of Moab. The Ammonites were the descendants of Ben Ami. Thus, we see that these tribes are related to each other, being descended from two brothers. All right, in chapter 6, it says here the letters of the Moabite stone. The English alphabet is taken from the Roman, the Roman from the Greek, the Greek from the Phoenician or Paleo Hebrew, which is generally accounted to be the oldest alphabet in the world. All right, so I'm in another book. It says here the inscription of the Stele of Mesha, commonly called the Moabite stone, the text in Moabite and Hebrew with translation by H.F.B. Comston, M.A. Vicar of Breadworthy. This is from 1919. It says here the inscription here set forth is accepted with practical unanimity on the part of experts as authentic. Okay, authentic. This is not a hoax. This is not considered a modern creation. This is authentic. This inscription is in the Louvre Museum again. It was chiseled on a monument of Basel by order of the Mesa, king of Moab, who was mentioned in 2 Kings 3-4, and who here recounts his victories over Israel, to whom Moab had long been subject. So they're mentioning Israel in this authentic script, this artifact telling a story of the ancient Moabites' victory over the sons of Jacob. The tribes of Israel. Israel was real. It is historic. To the student of paleography, it offers a good specimen of Phoenician script, parent of alphabets, used not only by Moab, but by Israel. All right, same language they spoke. So the Moabite people, right? Moabites, members of a West Semitic people. They are known principally through information given in the Old Testament from inscription on the Moabite stone. The Moabites belong to the same ethnic stock as the Israelites. Their ancestral founder, Moab, son of Lot, who was a nephew of the Israelite patriarch, Abraham. Right? This is real history, not just Bible stories is what we're telling you. So again, we go to Thomas Drew, or Noble Drew Ali, Moorish Science Temple of America. It was founded by Noble Drew Ali in the early 20th century. He based it on the premise that African Americans are descendants of the Moabites. Moabite? Oh, and thus are Moorish because they're Moabites, sometimes also spelled Moorish by adherents, by nationality, and Islamic by faith. So they're Moabites, ancient Moabites. So I'm in the Library of Congress, and we're going to take a look real quick at the original, the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, or the Circle 7 Quran written by Thomas Drew or the noble Drew Ali. This is the cover right here. Page three of this book. And you guys are going to notice that Jesus is all over this book. Yes, uh, the writings of uh, the Aquarian Gospels of Jesus is actually in here. Uh, but down here it says, noble Drew Ali by the prophet. It says, the industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest and Southwest Africa. These are the Moabites. Hamites, Canaanites, who were driven out of the land of Canaan by who? By Joshua. Why were they driven out? Moabites, Hamites, Canaanites. And who's Joshua's people? Because if his people, right, Muslims or Moors, are all these people, then who's Joshua's people? He's not pale skin. This is not the so-called white man. He's from the tribes of Israel, a descendant of Jacob. Joshua driving out the ancient Moabites out of the Holy Land. Yeah, they were over here too. Not just Moabites though. Yeah, in ancient America, there was many nations. If you guys go check out the series I have, again, no more misunderstanding from part one to part six, you guys understand in scripture that there was lots assigned to specific people, but some people did not obey those laws and they wanted to settle in other laws. A lot that was not promised to them. But again, they're saying, right, that so called African Americans are descendants of Moabites and thus are Moorish. So that's Drew Ali saying you're the ancient Moabites if you're Moorish. It's not just about complexion. And not all so called black Europeans are Moors. Again, 
check out the series for the whole breakdown as to why I'm saying what I'm saying. It may be a little uh, older, but it's still relevant. We can uh, definitely update the series eventually. So again, page 58, uh, Thomas Drew, he says, he's talking about Kush and Ham and how they left Canaan and settled in Africa. The dominions of Kush, Northeast and Southeast Africa, Northwest and Southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of their brethren from Asia and the Holy Land joined them, the Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit the Northwest Africa. They were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire, with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourn from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. This is the true possessors of the Moroccan Empire. Again, he's letting you know the Muslims, these are the Moabites, the Moors, these are your Moabites, Hamites, Canaanites, who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua. Israel and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt. In later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called to this day Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, etc. Noble Drew Ali letting you know what he says a Moor is. Ancient Moabites, huh? So again, we have a real artifact telling a real story between the wars of the Moabites and the Israelites, Moabites, the ones Drew Ali is talking about against Israelites. Yeah, this is more than just Bible stories. And the inscription of Mesha or the Moabite stone. All right, so this is what they're finding, just like the Los Lunas stone, right? We have here in New Mexico, same writing, Paleo Hebrew. A lot of this script is found all over ancient America. We've gone over that many times. So this is what they're finding in the Moabite stone, telling the story of the ancient Moabites. There are these people who he's saying the ancient Moors are and Joshua's people, Israel. So this is the translation, the literal IMS, the son of Camus, king of Moab, right? The Moabite, king of Moab, and his war against Omer, the king of Israel, Israel. Yeah, it's real. Israelites was real. Joshua did kick out the Moabites out of Canaan for a reason. And this stone even talks about the tribe of Gad. Now the men of Gad had dwelt in the land of Tyrod from old, and the kings of Israel built for himself. And I fought against the city and took it, and I slew all the people. He's talking about how he killed all the Israelites. This is a Moabite king. Remember, this is their side of the story. So this is a historical artifact that we're not reading the Bible. I just wanted you guys to see that there's a real history behind all these teachings, behind all these nations. They're calling Moabites. Drew Ali is saying it's the Moors. Ancient Moors are Moabites. It says here, Ahab Agonistes, the rise and fall of the Omri dynasty by Lester Grabby, discovered in Diban. All right, they're talking about the Mesha stone we were just uh, looking at. It says the Mesha still is not only one of the most important ancient West Semitic inscriptions exhibited in the Louvre Museum in Paris. This is an official artifact. It is also probably the most famous text for the confrontation between the Bible and the contemporary Near Eastern inscriptions. Actually, one reads there not only the name of the country Moab, the name of its King Mesha, all right? The country of the Moabites, who Drew Ali was talking about, of its god Kamosh, as well as many place names. You also see the name of Israel, the name of its King Omri, and of its god Hawa, Jahba, as well as the name of the traditional Israelite tribe of Gad. All right, even Gad is up in there. We just showed you that. It says many commentators have interpreted the wars of Mesha mentioned in the still as the Israelite Moabite war recounted in 2 Kings 3 4 8. All right, it's in there, it's in the Bible, and they found an inscription that proves that part of the Bible. Again, the Mesha Stili, if you guys Google it, you guys will get it. It's a real artifact. Here we have a good close up of it. All right, the parts that were restored. As you guys can see, this is the lettering, Paleo-Hebrew, all right? 
mentioned exactly what Drew Lee is saying about the Moors, right? He's saying they're the ancient Moabites, Hamites, and Canaanites who were driven out of the land of Canaan. They had war with Israel. This is real. As Condrop says, more on more war. Or black on black crime. Make sure to check out the series again if you have any no more misunderstanding. Again, the inscription of the Stell of Mesha, the Moabite stone. Who's the ancient Moors? The Moabites. They had war with Jasharala. It's more than just Bible stories. Just ask Drew Ali who Joshua was. And all skin folk ain't con folk. <laughs> Shout out to Con Drop. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this little brief uh, video. Just wanted to remind everybody about my series and show you that this is more than just something you read about in the Circle 7 Quran or in the Bible. This was actual real history. And a lot of this, again, when they're talking about Canaan, guys, the real Holy Land, we're talking about America. So picture all that happening here in America. Much love and respect. Thanks for tuning in once again. Pura vida, mi gente. Wow.